Thank you for joining us in our weekly prayer call. My name is Evangelist Denise Williams, and I'm your prayer warrior. And we thank God for you joining us again as we enter in to see what God has for us in this upcoming year. This is our first prayer call of the new year, and we're so excited to know that our God has good things in store for us coming up in this new year. You can reach us um, by snail mail at P.O. Box 58, I'm sorry, P.O. Box 350-662, Jacksonville, Florida, and the zip code is 32235. Again, that's P.O. Box 350-662, Jacksonville, Florida, and the zip code is 32225. And the name of our organization is the Healing Place Ministries. Amen. We thank God for you. And if you want to email in a prayer request, our email address is the broken vessel speaks at gmail.com. The broken vessel speaks all one word at gmail.com. Bless the Lord. So tonight, amen. We're going to get into our lesson for tonight. We're going to be brief. We're not going to keep everyone a long time. And we thank God for Evangelist Thomas being on the line with us on tonight. And we're talking tonight about goal setting. And we normally don't associate goal setting with, with the kingdom. At least I haven't heard of anybody doing it. But God has impressed in my spirit that as believers, we need to set goals on what we're, we're we want to accomplish in the Lord for the new year and just to have a better focus. And um, amen. Last time we were on the line, we talked about focus, meaning fresh opportunities create unbridled success. So we want to be successful in the new year and we want to advance in the kingdom of God. Amen. amen. So we're going to read, we're reading in King James and um, um, evangelists. If you have anything you'd like to share, you could join in. And I'm going to read from Isaiah 58 and 14, and this is what has been impressed in my spirit. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So that's speaking to prosperity and growth. And when it talks about the heritage of Jacob, that means that all of the blessings and all of all of the, all of the blessings that God has for Jacob, it's it's available for us today. But we have to be in line with what God wants us to do. Amen. So that's Amen. what that's that's what I was meditating on right before um, the prayer call. Amen. Because um, it re- it, it, if, you, if you see it, it cross-references, take light in the Lord, and he will give thee the desires of thy heart in Psalms 37 and 4. So here's the thing. If we delight thyself in the Lord, in other words, if we make God's agenda our agenda, and if we have a heart for souls the way Jesus wanted us to, 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 to be saved, amen, because he, saw, he, he, he looked for lost souls. The Samaritan woman was a lost soul. Amen? The woman with the issue of blood was a lost soul. So Jesus looked for hurting, wounded people that needed hope and deliverance, and he offered them the gospel. So this is how we delight ourselves in the Lord, is sharing the gospel with others so that we're doing the will of the Father in the earth. So in both of these scriptures, it talks about how if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us our desires. So what does that mean? That means that we don't have to worry about where that next check is coming from, where that next meal is coming from, because if we just delight ourselves in the Lord, in other words, make God's agenda our primary agenda, he will work out all of the other things in our lives that need to be worked out. Because one thing about God is that he does not forget that we have needs. When he calls us to do a work, he's already planned a way to work out our, our personal needs. But we have to trust him to allow him to fix our personal needs and continue to go on with what he called us to do anyway. And that's kind of hard for human beings to do. Because when the rent is due, all you're thinking about is, how am I going to meet this rent? I don't have enough money for this rent. But if you do what God called you to do, he will send somebody to bless you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, um, Evangelist, if you have something you want to share about that, that would, you know, you could go ahead and share. Amen. Praise God. Um, 
this is very interesting because that was one of the things that I myself um, purposed even before the new year. I had already um, wrote out a list. You know, the Bible says write the vision, make it plain. Um, without a vision, people perish. And, you know, that was one of the things I decided to do for myself for spiritual goals as well as natural goals, um, but more or less spiritual goals, things that I desired um, of the Lord, or even things that I that I've been seeking the Lord for, I wanted to write those things down. And as the year went, you know, progressed, I would mm-hmm. check off as God opened up the door. I would check off as God answered those prayers. And the scripture that came to me is, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, and everything else will be added unto you." Um, and that this what well, you're talking about seeking God and delighting ourselves in God, you know, is so Mm -hmm. important because that's what he wants us to do. Um, Sometimes we do get um, bombarded and tied down with the things that we need, but um, if we just keep God first in everything that we do and say, um, trusting trusting in him with all our heart and leaning not to our own understanding, um, he'll supply and he'll give us everything we need and even things that we want. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this is really um, just talking about goal setting. This is so on point uh, with in an, in an alignment and in the same vein of what I'm doing. Um, and I didn't even tell you that. <laughs> Amen. Um, thank God for confirmation. Bless the Lord. And the thing is, is that, you know, I mean, as believers, we're always committing ourselves to the Lord. We're committing ourselves to more prayer and more fasting and more study. And those are all noble efforts. There's nothing wrong with that. But once you get all this word inside of you, what are you doing with it? And this is this is what God is challenging me to do in my in, in this season of my life. It's like, okay, you've been in church all your life. You don't pray, you don't praise, you don't fast, you don't study. What are you going to do with all that I've invested in you? So this is this is the challenge that God has given me. So now my job now is to seek God about, okay, God, you've invested in me. I, I, I have the word. I understand what I'm supposed to do as a believer. I know how to rebuke the devil. I know how to pray. I know how to fast. But now God wants us to go out and find somebody else who was in the same position as I was. I, I'm supposed to go out and find somebody else who is spiritually dry, somebody who is weak in their faith, and I'm supposed to be their proselyte. I'm supposed to be called alongside to help them get to where they should, they should be in God. And while I'm helping them get to where they should be in God, God is going to bless me for being obedient. Amen. See, God blesses us through obedience. Submission and obedience is how we grow in God. And a lot of people miss that point. Psalms 37 and 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So once we set a goal, we have to commit it unto the Lord, and he will bring it to pass. He will tell you how to go about doing it. Amen. So so for those people that sit around and say, I want to know God's will for my life. I want to know God's will for my life. You already know God's will for your life. You're supposed to be spreading the gospel. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Once you spread the gospel, if God has any other instruction for you, he will give that to you. But you have to do your first works first. We have the ministry of reconciliation, meaning we're supposed to reconcile the lost back to Christ. And I don't see a lot of evangelizing evangelists going on like there should be. We have a lot of people going to church, and we have a lot of people giving tithes and offerings. We have a lot of pastors building bigger buildings, and that's all wonderful. But what are we doing as far as addressing their soul? Yes. Yes. This is what this is what God is putting in my spirit. Yeah, we're addressing their needs. We're we're, we're clothing the naked, and we're we, we're sheltering the, the you know the, those that need a home. But the most important part of all of our outreach efforts has to start at the core. Mm-hmm. If we're not bringing them to the cross, all this other stuff is temporary. So this is what God was telling me about. Commit your ways unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then he will bring it to pass. So in other words, if we just put our plans before the Lord and say, Lord, this is what's impressed in my spirit for me to do. Show me how to do it. And if God is pleased with that effort, if God is pleased with what, what's in your spirit, and if God put it in your spirit, he will open a door for us to be able to do it. Oh, this is why it's important for us to sit back and evaluate and reflect and set a goal. 
And it doesn't have to be a huge goal. It could be a goal to start teaching Sunday school. It could be a goal. It doesn't matter how small that goal is. But that goal, in my mind, in my spirit, what was downloaded to me was it has to involve advancing the kingdom of God in the earth. It has to start there. So, we, yes, we do have to be prayed up to do it. And, yes, we do have to be in our word to do it. Because if you don't have an outreach effort and we're not doing any type of outreach, then what are you praying and fasting and, and getting all this word for? We can't keep ministering to the same believers over and over again. We have to be called out there and step out there and minister to somebody who doesn't know Christ at all. We have to be willing to prophesy to somebody who doesn't know Jesus at all. Because they need to experience Christ. Amen. So this, these are the types of things that I want us to think about in the new year when we're talking about goal setting. Amen? Amen. And um, uh, Evangelist, if you could get Proverbs 16 and 9, that would be great. Let me know when you get it, and then you can read it for us tonight. But this is what God wants us to do, is that in this next season coming up, and um, um, Prophetess has talked with me, I mean, Prophetess and Evangelist Susan has talked with me about this, about how we are going to need to have a firm foundation in prayer, because we need to make sure we are hearing the voice of the Lord in this upcoming season. Amen. And you've got to make sure that it's God speaking to you. In order to do that, we have to get on our face and be close to God so that we know when it's God speaking. Amen? Amen. So when you find Proverbs 16 and, and 9, I believe, you can read it for us when you can. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 16, verse 9. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Amen. Amen. So it doesn't matter what kind of plans we make. We have to submit it to God to make sure it's God speaking to us and not us having a great idea. Because we all know that every good idea is not always a God idea. Mm. So this is, this, we're still talking about setting goals, and we're still talking about how to set goals, how to submit our, our desires to the Lord and let God, discern the matter to see if it's, if, it's, if it's something that we should be engaging in or is it something that, we're, that we want to do and God's saying, oh, no, it's not time yet. Oh, Amen. Because yeah. oh, sometimes we might have a desire to do something and God may have for us to do it, but it might not be time yet. We, we might not be mature enough yet. We might not have the resources yet. Maybe the circumstances are not right. So in, in everything that we do, we know we're supposed to submit it unto God with prayer. Amen. Amen. So that's why I, I felt that that scripture was important in going along with setting goals, setting godly goals. I guess that's what we could call tonight's, um, um, tonight's study is setting godly goals for 2019. And I know it sounds kind of basic to some people, but we have to start at basics. We have to have a relationship with Jesus. We have to have a, 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 a stable prayer life. And if we haven't established those things, we can't move on to doing kingdom projects because we have a lot of people jumping out there trying to do kingdom work, and they, haven't, they don't even understand the basics of salvation. They don't even understand submitting to God. They don't understand obeying leadership. They don't understand when God says something in, pro, in a prophetic atmosphere, it doesn't mean you run out and do it right now. You still have to wait on God's timing. There's people out there that don't even understand basics, and they're trying to do, they're trying to do um, PhD work, and they haven't mastered kindergarten yet. Mm, that's true. Amen. Amen? Amen? And this is why a lot of people are shipwrecked in the body of Christ, because we all grow from glory to glory. We all grow. And we have to make sure we understand that we're dealing with God and, and, and working, with, working on our soul salvation at the level that we can understand and discern. Because not only is it a danger to us, it, it's a danger to other people. When you're out there praying for people and you're not in the right place yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because demons will manifest when you pray. Oh, yes. Yeah. And when these things manifest, you have to be rooted and grounded in Christ to know that, you, to, to allow God to use you to, 
cast stuff out. But if you're not in that place, now everybody's in trouble. You're in trouble, the person you're praying for is in trouble, and the devil is having his way. So we have to be focused. And that's why I said focus. God gave me that acronym about fresh opportunities create unbridled success. So 2019 is a fresh opportunity for us to create unbridled success in Christ Jesus. Now, other people can interpret that however they want to do it, but this is the way that God had gave that acronym to me. We're looking for an opportunity to share Christ with the unsaved. Amen. Because our job is to evangelize. That's our, that's our purpose. Now, God is still good, and he still allows us to have families and husbands and wives and nice things and cars and houses and all of that. But all of that, is, is, all of that means nothing if we haven't spoken to somebody about their soul. Mm. Amen. All of that means nothing. And what do I mean by all of that means nothing? It's the same thing in your churches. Being on the usher board, the choir, the missionary board, all of that means nothing if you're not encouraging people to get to know Jesus. There should be fruit. The Bible talks about us having fruit. Well, at the end of 2019, we have to ask ourselves, God, I want to have some fruit from the previous year. I want to have some visible proof that fruit that manifests, that blesses somebody. And I'll know that it was you that did the work. So we have to start looking at that. And the more we get in place and the more we do God's bidding in the earth, he will elevate us. He'll give you the house that you need, the car that you need. He'll bless you with the children and the husband and all of this stuff. But first we have to start with God's agenda is more important than our agenda. It means waiting for our blessing sometimes. It means saying, God, I really want this new car or this new house or whatever. But right now I'm putting your agenda first because I know you'll bless me with what, I, what the desires of my heart. We just read that. Take the light in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms 37 and 4. Amen. Or the King James says, delight thyself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. But first we have to show God that, you know what, God, even if you don't bless me with it, I'm still going to serve you. Yeah, yeah. If I don't get the house, if I don't get the car, I'm still going to praise you. That's what we call the yes praise that no matter what, we're just going to praise God. Yeah. Because, because if God doesn't give it to you in the time that you want it, it doesn't mean that God's not going to bless you with it. And it doesn't mean that, and, and, and it might mean that God wants you to believe for more. Maybe you're believing for a little apartment. Maybe God got a house for you. And he wants you to bring your faith level up to believing for the house. So this is, this is what I want us to think about in 2019 is to start thinking about greater. If I could leave a word with us for tonight, it would be greater because there's so much more that God wants to give to us, but we have to get things in his proper perspective so that he can bless us. We have to be in position so that he can bless us. Amen. And as we set goals for 2019, God, trust me, God has already set an agenda for us. And by the end of this year, not only will we be blessing other people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, we will have grown spiritually ourselves. See, God never tells us to do something and there's no blessing in it for you. As you bless others, God blesses you. So it's not always with material things, but he blesses us with more knowledge and understanding. He blesses us because our gifts become sharpened. That's why we need to engage unsaved people yeah. because your gift, your gift gets stirred up and God uses you to bless that other person, but your gifts become sharpened. Your discernment becomes sharpened. Interpretation of tongues is sharpened. All of the gifts become more sharpened because you're blessing and pouring into someone else. Amen. 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 God wants us to exercise our spiritual muscles too. Yeah. So in order to do that, we have to come in contact with people who are a little messed up. 
Maybe they do cuss a lot. Maybe they maybe they do dress a different way that we that that we know is not a godly way. Maybe they do use language that they shouldn't use. But those are the people that we can pour Christ into them and they'll bless us because it's a blessing to lead somebody to Christ. It's a feeling like unbelievable feeling. You know that evangelist. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. I mean, when you lead someone to Christ, it's, it's, it, it, I mean, you want to talk about endorphins. Oh my goodness. It's the best high that you'll ever experience in your life when you introduce somebody to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Cause you're almost happier for them than they could be for themselves. And I, I don't even think that's possible. Mm-hmm. So we want to bless, we want to be a blessing and we want to be blessed ourselves and we want to submit more to God in this year. We want to obey God like never before, because there are some perilous times. We keep think, we keep saying perilous times, we're living in perilous times, but they are yet to come as the government changes, as, as, as the laws of the land change and which, and we're living holy in the midst of a landscape that is constantly changing. We're going to need to know Christ for real. Amen. Amen. Because what does, what does the word say? Unless the Lord builds a house, they that labor, labor in vain. Psalms 127 and 1. So we want to labor in the Lord, and we want to build a legacy of faith and deliverance and salvation in the Lord so that our fruit will remain. Amen. Ooh, this is blessing me tonight. I don't, I don't want to get too lengthy because I know that um, it's just you and me, Evans, on here. But someone else is going to listen to this broadcast after the fact. And um, I'm just sharing what God has put it on my heart. If you have anything that you like to add or share or a scripture you like to add, please just go ahead and just share. Amen. Amen. I'm just enjoying the word of God on tonight. Um, it's definitely food for my soul. And it's a reminder of, you know, what we are to do, uh, what who we are and what God has commissioned for us to do. And mm-hmm. really be on, you know, about our Father's business, continue to be about our Father's business. And even the more, somebody might say, well, it don't take all of that. Well, yeah. it takes that and a whole lot more um, because, you know, there's so many people that God is just waiting for us to witness to and Amen. to share our testimony with. Um, so so many times people get so caught up with the church people instead of the unchurched people. Like uh-huh. you said, you know, there are people out there um, that just need, they just want to know that Jesus loves them. They, they you know, there's so many churches already that, you know, <laughs> not yeah. in the right place, and it's been a turnoff for them. So we got to, it's, it's a mandate. We have to be able to be open to the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us wherever we are, whether in the store, you know, you know, wherever we are, to, to allow God to minister, to help us and lead us and guide us to that individual, wherever they are, um, in whatever state that they are you know, um, and to allow God to use us and give us the words at the appropriate time because we don't know what they need. We don't know what they're going through, but God is an on-time God, you know, and sometimes all they need to know is Jesus loves you. And, you know, that will be enough to, you know, cause them to be in tears of submission. So just praying that God would just continue to um, bless the body of Christ and help us to know who we are and what he's truly mandated us for us to do. Um, it's all right to shout and it's all right, like you said, to get happy. But, you know, who are we touching? Who are we reaching? Yeah. You know, who are we, Amen. Where's Amen. the impact? Mm-hmm. You know, Amen. So uh, Amen. this is encouraging. Yeah. Amen. So what does the word say? Faith without works is dead. So Amen. where are your works? Amen. Yeah. Amen. So Proverbs 29 and 18 tells us if there's no vision, the people perish. So as believers, what is God saying? You're supposed to have a goal. You're supposed to have a vision. You're supposed to have something in your life that you're working towards. Amen. That God yeah. is in the midst of it. Amen. The you creativity know, that he gives us. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Evangelist. I almost called I, you Pastor. That, that must be God. Yes, I love the verse that you read about a man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directed his steps. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and that's so powerful because, you know, it, it brings a question in, in our mind, Lord, are you directing my steps in any exactly. way? Mm-hmm. Every plan and every decision, are you are you directing me? You know, and mm-hmm. if not, we really need to wheel that back and say, Lord, help me to be in your will. Help me to go in the way you want me to go. Whatever exactly. you're saying to my life for this year, God, you know, help me that I will be submissive and committed mm-hmm. to what it is you are saying for my life. Amen, amen. 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 Because a lot of us, we we're, we're so driven, and I'm not and I'm not putting nobody down for this, but we're so driven with pleasing our pastor and having mm-hmm. recognition of the pastor. But who are you serving? Yeah, we're supposed to be serving God. Amen. 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 So we're not we're not we're not. I mean, we yes, we're supposed to be obedient to our leadership. I'm not saying that we're not supposed to be, but we're working for the Lord. And if your agenda is God's agenda. Your pastor's agenda is God's agenda. We're all working for the same thing because God is a God of confirmation and God is a God of agreement. God does not want us to relish just the praise of our pastor. He wants each of us as believers to have our own personal goals for the year that include some kind of ministry work. Maybe you need to go and, and, and volunteer at the soup kitchen. Somebody might ask you about Jesus at that soup kitchen. Yes. Maybe you need to go volunteer at the daycare. They might need help down there. Or the homeless shelter. There's always an avenue where we could go. Where where somebody, God has somebody there that is waiting for the anointing that we have to minister Christ to them. There's always, God always has somebody waiting for our ministry. So this is why we can't take our salvation so lightly and just say, okay, we're saved and, you know, I'm praying for me and my family and that's it. It has to be outside of what you're doing. And, yes, I know everybody's busy. I know everybody's got kids and husbands and daycare and and little league games and PTA meetings. I know all of that is part of our lives. But we have to make room, even if it's just once Mm -hmm. a week. Amen, amen. Because here's the thing, at the end of our life and at the end of our journey, God is going to ask us, what did you do with the Jesus I gave you? What did you do with the anointing? Hmm. I mean, that's, that's the reality. And that's what God was downloading into my spirit is that, what, did you, what are you going to do when I ask you that? And, and I said, well, God, you know, I just repent. If there's anything I missed, I repent. Because we have to be ready. Now, I don't know which version of the Bible this is, but this is John six twenty seven. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Now, you can read that in King James as labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endures unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Hallelujah. Amen? So we Amen. have to remember that no matter what we do, we cannot be conformed to this world to the point where we forget our mandate. It's wonderful to be happy and be a blessing, but we cannot forget our mandate. Amen? Amen. We you can't know, be conformed say, to this world. Go ahead, Evangelist. I'm sorry. I, I want to share something. Um, you know the scripture uh, where Jesus was tempted um, by the devil when he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and um, how he how he began to um, uh, say, "If you be the Son of God, you know, turn these this this um, stone into stone bread. Into bread. Yes. yes, stone into bread, um, and how God, how Jesus came back with the word and says, you know, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And this is just letting us know that Jesus, you know, he knew what the Father's will was, and that was to fulfill his work on the earth and, and, and to, so that we, you know, can receive him. And, you know, as far as going all the way to Calvary, 
And, you know, I think about that and I think about what is God's will for my life. You know, um, so many times the enemy will try to tempt us. And you, we all know all the three, you know, ways he came towards Jesus to tempt him um, while he was fasting. And the enemy was going to always try the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. He's going to come and he's going to try to tempt us with so many different things while we're here and try to cause us to lose focus while yep. we're here. But we have to, just like Jesus was, you know, he had to, he, he came back with the word, it is written, you know. Um, we have to remind ourselves and remind the devil what the word is and what God has said to us for our life. Mm-hmm. And, Amen. That, and that we have to remain focused of what God's will is for our life. That's the point I want to bring out. You know, mm-hmm. not to get distracted with the things of the world, and yes, we do have to take care of our family, and we have to, uh, we have so many different obligations, but we cannot neglect God's will. Mm. We can't neglect what it is God is saying for us, and and that just goes with seeking God and 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 making sure that. What he's telling us each and every day that, you know, we're carrying that out all Amen. the way with our whole heart. And, and you know, that's just going in line with what you're saying about, Amen. you know, mm-hmm. it's all together, delighting ourselves and, and writing our goals and making sure that, that God is getting the glory out of our life. You know, everything this that we may do sound, yes. this may Go sound ahead. funny, but I always think about the scripture that says, you know, when he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Mm-hmm. Well, I always say, well, he can't say well done for something you haven't done. Amen. <laughs> that's that's right. how I look at that scripture. You know, Lord, I want to you to say well done for the work that I'm doing here. No matter what, you know, sometimes we level the work and we think that it's so little and minute, but in God's eye, he, he is, you know, the angels are rejoicing, even for the Amen. one soul. Even for the, 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 the moment that you take out for witness or just to say, you know, um, can I give you a flyer, all those are open doors. And you never know how God will work in those little instances. And we just have to be open and um, sensitive to the Holy Spirit on, in which way you want to lead us each Amen. and every day. Yes, we have to, because here's the thing. Sometimes God will ask us to do things just to see if we'll be obedient, because I remember um, years ago when God was dealing with me about which direction to go into ministry, because I had always told God I wanted to do deliverance ministry, and um, he told me to go rent a hotel room, and I took my income tax money, and I rented mm-hmm. that hotel room, and I rented, the, I rented the room each time on each, and until the money was exhausted. I had a good bit of money, and I rented it every month until that money was exhausted. But not a lot of people came out. It was like five people here, four people there. And we, we was in this big hotel room, and it was only five and four people. Mm. And I asked God, I said, well, why, why did I have to do that? He said, because obedience. And mm. it's so funny because out of that, at the time, that, that's why it's, it's good to not be weary and well-doing because I was going there, and it was only every, I did it every month for three months until the money was exhausted. And then I later found out just here recently that one of the people that came to that meeting is now a pastor. Wow. Wow. Now, this is, we're talking about 2010, 2011, this happened. And I never knew what happened to any of the people that I prayed for. And some of them got delivered and they went on in their lives and we separated and I didn't know what happened to them. And one of the young ladies that came, she is now pastoring. But do you know Why? Because we can see, you know, this is what the Lord showed me, that what you're just saying. We get caught up in the numbers, but God did get caught up with the one soul. Right. Just for right. one. We didn't know. You, we, sometimes I had no idea. Know. I just never yeah. saw her again. And now she's in another city. She's not in Jacksonville. She's not in Florida anymore. But she's pastoring a church. Wow. That's amazing. So see, this is, this is, why did I say that? Because I'm bringing us to another part of our goal setting. Be not weary in well-doing. Just because the numbers of people ain't there, just because it's not grandiose like the way you think it should happen, no, you're not going to be on TBN tomorrow because God wants to see if you're going to be faithful. Bless the Lord. Mm-hmm. Are you going to be faithful with the little? Are you mm-hmm. not going to despise small beginnings? Amen. Mm-hmm. This is what God wanted me to see in all of that. But at the time, I just felt all discouraged, and I said, well, I must not be doing what God wants me to do. Only four and five people are coming out. And look at what God blessed in. 
I had no idea she's pastoring now. I just recently found that out like last year. Wow. Amen. So God wants us to be, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't get discouraged when the numbers are not there because it's not always about the numbers. Sometimes it's obedience. Maybe God was working something out in me where I needed to be obedient. That's why he told me to do it. God already knew five people were coming out. But what he wanted to see was, am I still going to be faithful for the, uh, and preach to the five like I would have preached to 5,000? And this is what the mindset the church has to get into. It's not about numbers. Yes. Now think about it. If I, if I had given up and not reached that one soul and now she's pastoring, look at all the people that would have missed out because she didn't get her deliverance at that time in her life. Amen. That's, that, that's massive. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that's why we can't be weary and well-doing. We have to get on fire for God, whether you see a bunch of people or whether you see one person. Because that one person to God is just as important, Evangelist Susan, like you said, as the 5,000. What did Jesus do when one sheep was lost? He left the 99, and he went after that one. Because that one sheep was just as important and just as relevant as the 99. Amen. So we can't get weary and well doing and looking at what we see. That's a that's a that's a carnal mindset to be focused on how many numbers and how many people and how how many people could hear your sermon and how many people that's a carnal mindset. A kingdom mindset is that if God reaches this one person, who knows how many people that they will reach for Christ. That's a kingdom mindset. And that's why we have to set goals and be purposeful when we approach any project or any endeavor for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ooh, this is getting exciting for me. Okay. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's take a brief look at Second Chronicles 15 and 7, and then we're going to wrap up with some final remarks. That's Second Chronicles 15 and 7. Evangelist, when you get it, you can read it for us. You because said, God wants Second Chronicles fifteen and seven. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Fifteen and seven. Oh, it's the first class. I'm sorry. Hold on. No, that's okay. Take your time. And then after that, we're going we're gonna to have some prayer, and then we're going to get off the phone. I try to just keep it limited to an hour so that, you know, because people have got to get their kids ready for school and whatnot. So I try to keep it no more than an hour. So tonight we're going to end up a little early. And um, I thank God for you coming on the line with us tonight. Amen. Um, Second Chronicles 15 and 7. Be yes, ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Amen. And that's how good our God is. When we're obedient, he rewards us. He rewards us for seeking him, diligently seeking him. He rewards us when we're obedient. Amen. So I wanted to end with that scripture. And evangelists, if you have any final remarks, you could go ahead and add them before we go um, get into our um, next phase of our little service on the line tonight. No, I don't have anything. <laughs> Amen. Do you have any um, praise, um, prayer requests that you would like to submit? Anybody's name? And remember, we're using first names only. Any names on the prayer list that we could put on a prayer list tonight? I don't have anybody specifically, but um, <clears throat> if you could just continue to pray for, um, let's see. I don't have any specific names. I mean, I don't. I mean, there's so many things that we can pray for, but um, specifically, mm-hmm. you know, I don't have any anyone right now that I Amen. can think of. Okay. Well, we have several families. Um, I forgot her 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 last name, but Sister Sunshine. She used to come on our prayer call. She came on twice, and um, she went home to be with the Lord on Christmas Eve. Um, she was picked up from work, and um, 
uh, she said she couldn't breathe, and that led to um, her going home to be with the Lord. She had a blood clot, and some things got complicated. But we're praying for her family on tonight. Um, they buried her. Matter of fact, New Year's Eve, she she had her funeral. So we're asking God to bless her family. We're also asking God to bless the Cash family. Um, they lost. Um, he lost his daughter. Uh, I don't want to give too many names, but they they lost a family member just today. Amen. We're praying for the military. We're praying for our government. We're praying for our schools and our young people. So we're praying. We have an extensive prayer list. And we're also praying for the ladies that come on, normally come on the prayer line. I don't know if they forgot or I forgot whatever happened, but we're praying for them as well. And we're just grateful to God to be here in this new year and asking God to continue to bless us and direct our paths, that we continue to please him in all that we do. Amen. 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 So we bless the Lord. And again, thank you. I keep calling you Pastor Susan. I wonder if that's oh, God no. or is that just me? <laughs> that must oh, be no. just me. I don't know. Maybe it's God. I, look, I would come to your church if you was pastor. <laughs> <laughs> if God opened the door for me to do it, I sure would come. Yes, ma'am. But um, we thank God for you coming on the line for us. And, um, you know, you've been on the prayer call before, but this is the first time in a while, so I thank God for you. You've been a blessing, as always, to share your, uh, you know, what God has deposited in you on the prayer call because um, we're going to put the prayer call out there so that others can listen to it and be blessed by it as well. But right now we're going um, to kind of turn our hearts in and, and, and get in a mindset for prayer because we're going to give a brief prayer and thank God for all that he has done for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you and we come before you tonight, God. And the first Monday night of the new year, God, Lord, we just thank you and we lift you up, oh God, because there's so many that didn't make it, oh God, but you saw it thought it not robbery, oh God, to bless us once again, oh God, that we came into this new year, oh God, that we were blessed and delivered and set free, God, that we know you in the pardon of our sins, God. We thank you, oh God, for all that you have done for us, oh God, for each and everything in our lives, oh God, the things that we remember to thank you for and even the things that we didn't remember to thank you for, God. We thank you for it. We thank you, oh God, that you covered us in your blood, oh God, that no stray bullet caught us, oh God, that no, no car accident took out our family members today, God. But God, we just thank Thank you, and we lift you up, oh God, because you deserve all the glory and the honor, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight, God, we're asking you to look on our prayer list, oh God, the absent part of the prayer line, God, wherever they are, whatever they are doing tonight, God, we're asking you to bless them, God. Bless Pastor Aileen, Sister Lois, um, um, Sister Naomi, and Sister Shirley on the prayer line, God. Lord, bless the family of Sister Sunshine, oh God, as she went home to be with you, God. We're asking you to look on her family and hold them up, oh God. Hallelujah. Let them know Oh, God, that earth has no sorrow, oh, God, that heaven cannot heal, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're asking you to look on the Cash family as they have lost a family member even on today, God. Lord Jesus, let them know, oh, God, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, that she may be in a better place, that she is out of pain now, God, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, strengthen the family, oh, God. Lord Jesus, you know this family, oh, God, and there's many in that family that need you, God. Lord Jesus, in the sermon, in the, in the obituary, in the eulogy, God. Let them find you, God, as their Lord and personal Savior, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And not only for that family, oh God, but tonight we pray for family members and friends that are not saved. We lay them on the altar tonight, oh God, that they come to know you as their, their Lord and personal Savior, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, there are so many that need you, God. And Lord Jesus, we're asking you to bless us, oh God, that we will be a witness, oh God, that we will be worthy of carrying your gospel, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that we will open our mouth and speak to them, oh God, and let them know, oh God, that they have a soul that needs to be saved and a God that needs to be glorified, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, let us know, oh God, hallelujah, that we have to lay out before you, oh God, that we have to allow you to prepare us for the work that you have us to do, God, in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we're asking you to bless, oh God, sharpen us, oh God, lift us up, oh God, show us where we need to come up, God, in the name of Jesus, because in the year of 2019, oh God, 
We want to go forth like never before, oh God. We don't want it to be like last year and the year before and the year before, oh God. We want new testimonies, God. We want new uh, uh, new, uh, new miracles to see, God, in the name of Jesus. And the only way we can do that, oh God, is to submit and obey you, God, in everything that we do, God, in the name of Jesus, that we will listen for your still small voice, oh God, that we will obey, oh God, even when we don't understand, that we will obey, oh God, even when it is difficult, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And Lord, you said you'll reward us if we diligently seek you, oh God. Give us a mind and a thirst for your word. Give us a mind and a thirst for prayer, oh God, and that will fast even the more, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Bless our young people, oh God, as they go forth in school, God. I pray that you cover them in your blood, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that they will be covered in your blood, God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That no violence will befall them, oh God. Hallelujah. That no influence that is not of you will befall them, oh God. That they will not receive it, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm asking you to cover our children and raise them up, oh God. Raise them up to be the next generation in the church, oh God. Raise them up to be the next prophets. Raise them up to be the next preachers and bishops, oh God, that they will will live a godly life, oh God, before you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they will be evangelists yes, even in their school, oh God, that they will tell other young people about you, God, in the name of yes, Jesus. Jesus. If the teachers can't, they are not allowed to speak the name of Jesus, Lord, give it to the babies. Let them tell their yes, friends yes, about yes. Jesus. Let them tell yes, their yes. friends about a God that can fix everything, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, I pray yes. for orphan children on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray for children in foster care. I pray for children who are adopted. God, I'm asking you to heal these babies, oh God, that seem to feel like they've been thrown away, oh God. Lord, let them know, oh God, that you are a God that takes up the brokenhearted, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bless them, Father, as only you can, Father. Lord, bless my mother on tonight, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you know what's the situation, oh God. She's been diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's, oh God. And they keep telling me, oh God, hallelujah, that she'll die with this God. But I know you to be a healer, God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. And God, I'm asking you, oh God, to bring clarity back. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I'm asking you to rebuke every illness in her body even now, God, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to walk with her through that hospital, walk with her through that nursing home, God, and raise her up as only you can, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I know you're going to do it, God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. They already took off all the medication, oh God. Hallelujah. And they're saying it's a miracle, but I know it's you, God, in the name of Jesus. So God, God, I'm asking you to bless God as only you can, God. Bless our husbands, God, in the name of Jesus. Wherever they are, whatever they're doing right now, God, I'm asking you to bless them, God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let them come to know you the way they should know you, oh God. Hallelujah. Bring them up, oh God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That they will be what you will have them to be. That they will aspire to do what you have called them to do, God, in the name of Jesus. And not just our households, oh God, but every spouse in America, oh God. I'm calling on you, oh God. To to lift them up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let them know, oh God, that there doesn't have to be despair. There doesn't have to be arguments about finances. But God, all they have to do is cry out to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Because you are God. Hallelujah. You're the banker that we need, God, in the name of Jesus. Because you can work out our finances, oh God, in Jesus' name. Oh God, I thank you and I praise you, oh God, for all that you've done, oh God. For all that you're going to do for us even in this year, oh God. Lord, teach us how to hold on. Teach us how to persevere through the tough times, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Mm. Teach us how to encourage ourselves in the Lord, oh God, so that when times get hard, oh God, we will cry out to you, oh God. We will not get discouraged. We will not take our hand off the plow. We will not give up, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And tonight, God, I lift up my baby girl Susan tonight, God. I'm asking you to bless her, God, in everything that she put her hands to do, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give Give her the wisdom, oh God, hallelujah, to continue to make the right decisions, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bless her home and her baby, God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. That you will do what you will have them to do, God. That you will show them what you need to show them, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you've looked on her so many times, oh God, so many times you've blessed, God. And now, God, I'm calling out for a blessing again, God, in the name of Jesus. Whatever her needs are, whatever her petitions are on tonight, God, whether they're spoken or unspoken spoken, God. I'm asking you to bless God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. 
Lord, you know what's needed. You know what's needed, God. And I'm asking you to bless, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, anybody else that listens to this prayer call, oh God, anybody else that listens to this teaching, oh God, I pray even for them, God, as they listen to the playback, God, in the name of Jesus. And whatever they need, God, I'm asking you to bless them, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let your anointing fall, even on a recording, God, in the name of Jesus. Let their hearts be touched and uplifted, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I rebuke any spirits that bring us down, oh God. I rebuke any spirits of depression or oppression, God, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to heal every broken vessel tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. No matter how they've been broken, oh God, no matter how their spirit has been down, God, I'm asking you to pick them up and lift them up, God. Put them back together, oh God, and make them into the saint or the, or the saint that you would have them to be, God. In Jesus' holy name, oh God, we pray. We ask you to bless our government. We ask you to bless our president, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, and Lord, I know that some will, will not approve of that, God. But tonight, yes, God, you said, hallelujah, that we're supposed to pray for the leaders of the land, God. So tonight, yes. I pray even for him, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I pray for America, oh God. And I ask you, oh God, to bless the American people, oh God, yes. that their eyes will be opened, oh God, and that yes. they will turn back to you, God, as they're supposed to, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless our police force, oh God. Bless our first responders and those in the hospitals, oh God. Those in the mental institutions, oh God. Lord, we don't want to leave anybody out on tonight, God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And those that we may have forgotten or overlooked, oh God, we're asking you to send a blessing their way too, God. Bless our Amen. homes, oh God. Let your spirit abide even in our homes, oh God. Let our Amen. hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Lord, tonight, God, even as we slumber and sleep, oh God, give us the dreams, give us the visions. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God that you would have us to do, God, in the name of Jesus. Wake up our anointed. Give us a fresh download of the Holy Ghost, oh God. Your word Amen. says one baptism, but many refillings, oh God. Fill us up oh, again, God, Amen. in the name Amen. of Jesus. We need fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil for this season, God, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We bless you tonight, God. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we pray tonight. Amen and amen. Bless you, Jesus. Amen. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb.